Happy New Year, Greg. Happy New Year, mate. This is Tea and Toast. This that... is our year, this is Jason. This is it. That's Greg. Yeah. I'm Jason. That's Jason. On today's episode, we're talking about the most disappointing Christmas presents you got back in the day. Oh, bring them back down, Jason. Happy New Year. Hi, I'm Ray Parker Jr. and you're watching Tea and Toast. See, I find this really hard because I um, I never was disappointed with anything I ever got for Christmas, Jason. You see, what I mean, Greg, is like the things that you were desperate to get for Christmas, and then when you got them and you actually played with them, they were nowhere oh, near as good. You as mean you like that? Wanted them to be. That's clever, Jason. Oh. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Who came up with that? Don't know. It was me, wasn't it? No. Anyway, I don't get any credit. I'm going to kick things off here, Greg, with a game that. I would reckon that ninety percent of population have played. I'm going to throw this out there now, and you are going to be shocked. Never played it. How do you know what I'm talking about? I've just seen it on that computer there. Huh. I'm talking about Mouse Trap, Greg. It's weird, isn't it? Because I, I ever I, I know about it. I knew about it growing up and everything. But I never had it. Oh, the advert made it look amazing. Oh, it did, didn't it? And it was based on what they call a Rube Goldberg machine. Sorry? Rube Goldberg was this guy that made these machines that, if you watch the Goonies, at the beginning of the Goonies... Goonies? <laughs> Goonies? <laughs> beginning of the Goonies, you know when they open the gate yeah. for a chunk to go in and it sets off that contraption? Yeah. That's a Rube Goldberg machine. And that was like the premise of Mousetrap. Uh, it's always that cage bit, isn't it? Yeah. So what you did was you played the game, the board game, you went around the game and various bits of the game gave you parts of the contraption didn't it to set up know, never played as you went so you went through all this you built the thing you pressed the button it was over in three seconds <laughs> leave it Greg right. leave it leave it <laughs> um, very anticlimactic um, so Mousetrap was originally brought out by Ideal in 1963 no yeah and you we've seen the old box at the car boot before you can tell it's a really old game but the more modern packaging that we we've got um is different and it's now brought out by hasbro and it's completely different again hasbro swallowed a lot of toy companies they have haven't they yeah um but yeah mouse trap looked amazing the advert looked fantastic really disappointing when you played it Build the craziest mouse trap that was ever made to catch a mouse. Kick the bucket down the chute, turn the handle, take a dive, and now rebound. And the pressure's building up. Great shot next door. Home team with one more go. Aim. Shoot. Through the two blues and he's done it. Oh, now you'll have to ask him round again. Mouse trap and rebound. They're both ideal. Next up, Greg. It's something that I don't think you had as a child either. I had everything. But we have collected it since. Uh, big track. Oh, is that the... Um, yeah, that. the tank yeah. programmable car thing. Which again, the advert made it look phenomenal. There was one advert where the kid sent it to pick up an apple. And take the apple to its dad in the trailer. Dad picks the apple up and off it goes. It was amazing. So it just moved. It's just a remote control car really, isn't it? No, it's not. It's a memory thing. When you get it, there's a keypad on the top, Greg. Right. And it makes it look really easy in the advert. You've got to program it all in. So if you want it to go forward, turn right, turn left, forwards and backwards, you've got to program all that in. Then you press go and off it goes. What a load of... That's re this is what I would rather have, Jason. Remote control one of the... I mean, this isn't the original one, obviously, but... I, I must have left the scanner noise on. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. I'll just turn it off. Um... Yeah, have that. That's what you, you just want to do that, don't you? Yeah. You don't want to do all this and then watch it go. But it was hugely popular. It was made by MB, Norton and Bradley. It came out in 1979. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story. You might remember this, Greg, when we were at the car boot once. Time to go for a cup of tea, people. No, and the lady had a big track in the box, didn't she? On oh, floor. you were horrible to her. <laughs> Jason, you were horrible. Oh, she got my goat. Yeah, he often brings a goat with him to the car boots. <laughs> um, she had a box uh, big track, but it was a modern one. She just didn't know. Yeah, but she was really venomous about it. No, right? you were, Jason. No, after she was, 
Right, I went up to the thing and I picked it up and I knew it was a replica one. It was in the box, but it looked great. Modern release. And uh, I said, how much the big track? She went, oh, it's an old one, that is. I went, oh, no, it's not. It's a, it's a reproduction. Yes, it is. It's from the 60s. He's so... He's so lying. And then he's I so pointed lying. out to her rather politely... He didn't. He went... But they see that they didn't have the internet in the 60s. And and why would there be a web address on the box? And you pointed to the, the thing on the box. And the original didn't actually come out until 1979 anyway. And what was quite funny was her going... And then she snatched it off me and put it in the boot of a car. And sold it later on to another guy. Who looking, thought it was an original one? For 200 quid? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was made in uh, 1979 and the advert made it look amazing. I wanted one. Didn't have one when I was a kid, but we've had one since. Oh, I mean, I could have had one, but I didn't want it. Of course you could. Here's the advert. This is Big Track, the computer-activated truck from MB Electronics. Program in up to 16 commands and Big Track will advance, turn and fire three blasts. Big Track follows its instructions and can manoeuvre around every obstacle to complete its mission. Program it and Big Track obeys. Well done, Big Track. Big Track from MB Electronics. Two more, Greg. Mm. Two things that you and I never owned. Could have, didn't want them. Just but to, yeah, yeah. are now glad that we didn't own because everybody tells us that they were terrible. This next one is uh, the idea of it, it just baffles me. What is it, Greg? Soda Stream. I mean, how can that baffle you? Make your own fizzy pop. What's the point? Oh, but again, the advert made it look amazing. Yeah, but it's apparently it tasted vile. No, but Greg, you have to remember this is back in the day when we got fizzy pop delivered by a bloke in a van. Did you? Yeah, the Corona Pop Man. Uh, yeah, but it's, I mean, it, it was never expensive to go and buy a, a bottle of lemonade, was it? No. Even then, it wasn't expensive. So, But soda stream syrups and all that were quite expensive. Yeah, so, and then you've got to take your time to do it, whereas you could just go to the fridge, open your bottle of lemonade. I remember my friend having one, and they never used. I think that they did what everybody did with the soda stream, and they got it, used up the gas and the syrup that came with it, and never, never bought any more. I used to, didn't it take ages as well? Did, did? It's cold in here. Didn't it take ages to do it as well? I you didn't know. just fizz it and then that was it. Well, like, on the advert, you just squirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll put that advert in, shall I? The squirting one. Well, I don't know if I can find the squirting one, but there'll be a Soda Stream advert right now. I can't wait. Hey, an unexpected thing, so get busy with the fizzy with Soda Stream. Big or small, get busy with the fizzy, ah! short or tall. Crave a fizzy flavor with water from the tap. Press the magic button, shake it, just all up. Mix a little mixer, add a little dash. No trouble with the bubble, splish, a little splash. It's an endless stream, so get busy with the fizzy, ah! Soda Stream. That is it. Finally, Greg, the single most disappointing toy of the 80s, apparently. Which, ironically, is still going. I know. And it's one of those things that everybody says, oh, I always asked for that and never got it. Well, be glad you never got it, because those who did get it tell of how terrible it was. Go on, Jason. Mr. Frosty. Mr. Frosty. The ice-crushing, slushy-making, syrup-laden... Machine. Machine. That apparently couldn't even crush the ice. So you would put the ice in the top of Mr. Frosty. Mr. Frosty. Press his hat down. Press his hat down. Turn the handle. And then pour the juice in. And then it all came out. The crushed ice came out. And pour a little bit of syrup on top. That came in its own little cups and everything, didn't it? Mm. Looked amazing. Mm. Amazing. Terrible. Awful. Well, we don't know. No, we never know. Never got one. We well, were those kids that think I always used to just... To be honest, if I wanted like a slush puppy, I used to just get um, a holiday and go abroad and then get the proper ones from beyond the bar. Of course you did, Greg. <laughs> Whereas Mr Frosty was disappointing kids all over the country. To be honest, it's just a bit of ice in it. They should grow yeah, up. Crushed ice. It's hard to find the actual originals, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's still going. It's still produced by Play School, I think, now. Well, I nearly bought your kids it last year. I don't know whether you noticed the text I sent you last year saying, have they got Mr Frosty? And you went, yeah, they tried it. It's rubbish. The newer one. And I was going to buy that new one for them. All right. 
Just thought I'd throw that there, Jason. Thanks very much. So much I look after you, you know, right. your family and all that. I'll try and find an advert for Mr. Frosty. New or old? Whatever's available. Oh. Mr. Frosty is such fun, it makes treats for everyone. Pop the ice under his hat, turn the handle just like that. Squirt in a flavour that like and delicious lollies. Mmm, that's nice. And now there's new Mr. Frosty with fantastic new ice shapers. New Mr. Frosty from Play School. Mr. A voice. We have to hold our hands up. You already have. You've held your it. hands up already. I apologise. Last week, not last week, the last episode we had, we said that nobody had guessed the mystery voice. One person? Yeah, whose name is now on the screen. Um, I can't believe it. It was Cliff Richard. It was Cliff. If you want to hear it again, watch the other watch episode. The episode. I find it, the gym, really, really... Boring. I honestly thought nobody. I said, didn't I? I categorically said. I said uh, without any doubt that no one would ever get that, and they got it. Got it. One person got it though. A lot yeah, of people said the same one. person, didn't they? Oh, there um, was all sorts of suggestions. One person said Dolph Lundgren recently. Um, Russell Crowe, I think, was a suggestion. But it was Cliff Richard. Um, well done. We will have a new mystery voice. Next week. Well done to that name that was on the screen then that we can't quite remember well just yet. Well done. <laughs> but well done you. You are a star. In fact, you are the star of this week's show. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Oh, happy new year. Well, it's a new year, Jason. So the one thing new that jokes. we... What? Got new jokes. Well, no, this is what I was going to say. The one thing I know you wanted to do is cut this. So after a lot of consideration, we're not going to cut it. Great. Can we just get on with it, though? Because we have had a couple of comments from people now that have said that you are dragging it out a bit. <laughs> There's two, isn't there? And you I love that. I just said a couple of comments. Yeah, but that's a couple could be ten. No, a couple is two. And how many a people few say, is more than two. How many people say they love it? Not many. How many people say they love it? Not many. You're lying, aren't you? Can you get on with it? I will, yeah. See, so if you don't like this bit, just skip it. It's not a problem, is it? So look, um, I wrote it down this week, Jason, on here. I didn't write it on here because it's black card. Are you laughing? <laughs> well, I am, but not at your joke. Oh. J <clears throat> right, I've got it. I've got it. Here we go, Jason. New Year. This is the start. This is the one. And then you go back to work next week. Oh, just do the you, joke. They'll all be doing it. J Oh. Jason, Bono and the guitarist Edge. You know Bono and Edge? I don't know them personally, but yeah. Do you not know them? Well, they walked into a bar, Jason, and the landlord said, Oh no, not you two again. <sighs> what a way to start the year. You see... The Allied sale is bigger than ever with big sale savings. Save on many leading names, including our amazing Antron Plus collection of Easy Care Family Proof Carpets. Like this superb range, down £2 to only £5.99 a square yard. Save on hundreds of carpets from £2.99 to £20 a square yard. And the fitting is free on all carpets £6.75 and over. It's the biggest ever Allied sale, and it's on now. Facts! For you. Thanks for you. Thanks, Greg. I only said that because it's a new year and that makes you happy. Have you got a fact? Making me look stupid saying you don't. facts for you. See, you knew you spoke over it then, didn't you? See, I was going to say facts for you. Then, but you couldn't have done it if you'd spoke over with me. You couldn't have put that funny voice in, could you? I was going to say you don't need me to make you look stupid. I resemble that remark. Face. Did you know, Jason, Old Lang Syne is traditionally sung at midnight on New Year's Eve? Do you know that? <laughs> yes, I did, and so did the whole... That's not a fact. The, the fact is, it was written by a Scottish poet, Robert Burns, in 1788. I also knew that. Yeah. Did you know what the Old Lang Syne means? No. It means, time's gone by, Old Lang Syne. 
But why? What my argument is, why didn't he just sing Time's Gone By? <laughs> May all the Craytons be forgotten. I don't know where they sing Old Lang Syne, innit? For Old Lang Syne, my dear. For so, why didn't they sing? What was, it, what was it again? Four times, times go- gone by, my, my dear. dear. Four times gone by. Why? Why don't know. Greg. Anyway, I've got a New Year's Eve related fact too. Did you know, Greg, that uh, New Year's Eve revelers in Times Square, because it's so busy, are often locked in the place they're standing for up to 12 hours. So many of them wear adult diapers, nappies. And the kids just go on the street. Sounds like a great place to be on New Year's Eve. So, basically, that area stinks of sh... Uh, yeah. It smells all, all New Year's. And Year. it must be true, because I read it on the internet. Here's one just going back for you, Jason. Did you know, apparently, it's illegal to eat mince pies on Christmas Day? Facts for you. Facts for you. That's it, Greg. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I've just come up with an idea live in my head on TV now. Live recorded? Yeah. You know how I should reply to more comments that people leave? Yeah. Because our viewers leave us comments and we read them all and we really appreciate them, but... Just Not all of them. All the ones that said about the Joker. Really <laughs> don't always have time to reply to them. I don't. I have just come up with an idea live in my head now that at the end of each show, we should pick a few of our comments every week and read them out. Great, go with it. Who have we chose this week? No, I haven't done it yet. I've just come up with the idea now, live in my head. Well then... It's just we'll teasing. Do it next week. Teasing. So we're going to read some of the comments out. On, yeah, on our favourite comment section. So we can put ourselves on there and then read the comments out. Well, I'll just flash the comment up on there. It's incredible. We could watch us on there. Why would we do that? We can just look at the comments. I'd rather watch. What a it. great idea! Brilliant. Um, but that's it for this week. If you would like to send us a message, send it to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to send us a message, <laughs> please get in touch with us at tnt at totgoo.com. That's t- nut at t- op- t- dot com. It does not have to be in capital. It doesn't. Thanks very much. You can put that down now, Greg. I'm going in a minute. Good. Don't start dragging this out as well. All right, then I won't. Oh, that was a tip, wasn't it? It was the hard bit. Sorry, Jace, I didn't mean to whack you with that. Oh, well, not much changes, does it? Another year. Find someone else to do it with then, Jason. You won't get them cheap enough. See you next time. Bye. Bye.